Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with our second episode of the meta recap. So now, what exactly is the meta recap? Well, this is the second episode and I've spent the first four to five minutes of the first episode explaining what it is and what it isn't for that matter. So check out the first episode of the meta recap, which I'll put in the cards above to check out what the series is all about. But in that first episode, we covered patches 1.0, 1.0a, and finally ending off with patch 1.1. So today we're going to be covering a little bit more, but before we get into patch 2.0, now I've left up on the screen um, what we left off at in the last episode, which is patch 1.1. So this is what the meta look like at patch 1.1 just for some context in case you guys forget you don't have to refer to the previous end of the previous video so we have it at the very start so without further ado we're going to jump into patch 2.0 all right so now into patch 2.0 this was released in january 2021 and actually this uh this patch had one of the smallest champion changes i believe there are only like five champions adjusted but the changes uh, the most significant change was actually Zed's shuriken with nerf. So basically, Zed got the Blitzcrank treatment of the shuriken with nerf. So Zed was probably the most meta mid laner for patch 1.0 all the way through to patch 1.1. But after this nerf, even though his damage didn't get directly hit, but the fact that his width uh, of his Q got nerfed meant, meant that it's really hard for him to hit his double or triple shuriken onto someone uh, that he ulted. So because of that, his damage did actually indirectly get hit. So Zed is out of the mid lane meta. But with um, this patch, we did have the release of all the Yordles. Now that was the bulk of the patch. We had the release of Kennen, Corky, Tristana, Lulu, and of course Teemo. And accompanying that was the Yordle event where you could get one out of the five Yordles for free. And actually the Yordles did have quite a big impact on the game. Because as you, as you guys can see, Kennen and Lulu have become the, the best Baron laner and support respectively. And also, uh, Corky did make a big splash a little bit later on after some buffs. But uh, Tristana and Teemo never really matter. So it's sort of three, 3 out of 5 is still a pretty good release for the Yordles. So, other significant events is we have the start of Season 1 on Patch 2.0. So, now we're going to cover the meta changes. So, as you guys can see, uh, Gragas is still in both uh, top and mid lane. However, the release of Kennen led to Kennen becoming more or less the best top laner. So, Kennen, of course, is ranged and back in the day he had a lot of damage so his range allowed him to chunk people out and you know just out poke them and then his ultimate did insane amounts of damage so he can use his ultimate to solo kill uh, like someone in his lane but more or less the meta it, back in the day is Kennen would poke out his laner make the opponent's laner, uh, laner's life hard then get his ultimate don't use it in the lane phase and rotate for a first dragon the uh, cannon's team is more or less like 80 percent chance they're gonna get the first dragon just because the cannon ultimate is huge in the dragon fights so that was the top lane mana there's no changes for jungle however mid you guys will see evelyn has become the top mid laner so uh, this was the rise of evelyn mid so for people who are around on this patch you guys will know that there was this was the one patch that evelyn mid was super duper op now i still put gragas there but in reality gragas in both top and mid lane was not like s plus tier canon and evelyn was s plus tier gragas was like the second best but he was only at s tier so evelyn mid the reason why it worked was evelyn's wave clear was insane uh, with uh, the buff to her uh, Q range previously and you know all, all that she needed to do was like press her hate spikes like uh, four times one wave is clear and no one could beat her wave clear so all that she had to do was clear wave and she could rotate to gank either the bot lane or gank the top lane if not she could uh, rotate to invade the enemy jungle and e even if you couldn't invade the enemy jungle you couldn't get off a gank you still rotate to farm like your your own jungle so you are stealing cans from your jungler but you know you are out farming the enemy mid laner for sure and having more pressure on the map because don't forget even if you the moment you go out of sight you could be anywhere so the other laner the top and the bot laners have to play safe so Evelyn mid became a menace he became really really overpowered and 
in uh, in the uh, Dragon Lane, there's no changes. Uh, uh, Jin is still the best uh, Dragon Laner, and in the bot lane, of course, we have the addition of Lulu. Lulu became the best support, and she actually laned very well against Alistair, who was still a top support. And uh, Janna and Brom sort of are like the third and fourth best support, so they're not on the on the graphic, but they are still up there. So uh, Lulu just straight up became the best support. She, her her polymorphs were great. Her buffs were great, her E was amazing, and of course her wild growth, she is just like, you know, she just makes one person really strong, so generally, she just buffed up the AD carry or whoever on her team that needed it to be to be really, really strong, and there's nothing much the opponent uh, enemy team could do about it, so this was really uh, meta-defining for the supports. So with that, that covers patch 2.0, now gonna move on to patch 2.0A. Alright, so into patch 2.0A. This was released in mid-January 2021, and uh, as you guys can already see from the graphic, there was a lot of changes, but first we'll talk about some changes that, uh, some other changes that happened, I should say. So first up, uh, we have the GA nerf. So this was the patch that killed the GA rush for all the AD carries. So what happened was a 580 nerf to GA, and as well as having a longer resurrection, uh, time by I believe it was 30 seconds and also having a cost increase now I will point out that uh, you know even across a patch itself that the meta changes across a patch like what happens at the start of a patch and at the end of a patch the meta can be very different generally what I show or I should say every time what I show is what happens at the end of the patch so what happened at the start of the patch is that Jin was actually still the highest picked AC but it's only towards the end of the patch where People realize that he actually wasn't good anymore. So, uh, you know, let's cover the changes. So first up, uh, Kennen still is the best Baron Laner, but what happened in this uh, patch is that, I should point out for context, is that this uh, patch was the first patch that we sort of saw some pro play. Now, of course, official Riot sanctioned pro play uh, hasn't actually started, but at this point, there were a lot of like uh, pro play that started. I believe like the C Icon series started on this patch, so we sort of, um, the meta was starting to get influenced by uh, what the the so-called pro players picked, and prior to this, there was absolutely no form of pro play. So, what happened is that Olaf became a top pick in both the Baron lane and the jungle. So, Olaf was like the highest uh, contested pick in pro play, and uh, Olaf was just really, really OP. He could just easily. Uh, just run people down and you know without much consequence so Olaf enters the Baron lane and the jungle meta in the jungle meta second place still Shivana still there Lee Sin uh, this is where Lee Sin was starting to get nerfs and he was just dropping off um, in the mid lane uh, as you guys can see uh, Gragas is gone and in, actually in the Baron lane Gragas is gone as well so what happened to Gragas Gragas got a major nerf to his the cooldown on his passive happy hour the HP per level he was getting his uh, Q uh, mana class and his uh, minion damage on Q. So he overall caught a bunch of nerfs. Uh, the the nerfs to Gragas combined with the rise of Olaf, Oriana, and Oredin so kicked uh, Gragas out of the meta. So Gragas is gone. So in pro play, the two most popular mid laners that were picked were Oredin Soul and Oriana. So it is worth to note that Oredin Soul didn't actually get any changes. Actually, Olaf, Oredin Soul, and Misfortune didn't actually get any changes this patch. Uh, Aurel Misfortune did get changes, but they were nerfs. So, um, the Olaf and Aurel so didn't actually get any changes this patch. It's just that due to the influence of pro play, everybody was uh, using Olaf and Aurel so because they saw the pro players use it and how successful it was. So the mid lane mana became a roam mana. So Aurel Soul's entire game plan is to use his W, clear out a whole wave, use his E and his Q to get a roam off on top or bot and then get a kill snowball himself and snowball his lanes so now oriana was the second best mid laner with uh she was always good she was probably always second best but now she was heavily heavily picked because she was the only one who had uh, like high enough wave care to sort of not suffer too badly from Aurelian Soul's roams. So she she had like slightly worse wave clear than Aurelian Soul, but her wave clear was still really good with her Q and her W especially. So she cleared waves really quickly. And she either roamed as well, like slightly behind him to the same lane, or she roamed to the other lane, or she just stayed and pushed the tower. So this was a very heavy mid roam meta. So now we're gonna actually discuss uh, the ADCs. 
So what happened in the ADCs? So the first big thing that happened, of course, is the is Jin going uh, going out of the meta because of the GA nerfs. So now Miss Fortune actually got um, nerfs to her Q uh, damage as well as her W attack speed, but she still became the most meta AD carry. Why is that the case? Because honestly, up to this point, most people thought that uh, Miss Fortune was just like an A tier, um, A tier AD carry, but she was picked in hundred percent of pro games. So at, take note, at this point, there was no bans yet on uh, pro play. So uh, every game she was getting picked by either team. So she had hundred percent presence in pro play. So people only then realized that Miss Fortune was actually way overpowered, especially with. Uh, Cannon, Aurelian Soul, and Orianna being in the meta as well as Alistar. So, the bot lane meta was Misfortune. Misfortune was the meta because there are so many good um, champions that could combo with her. So, imagine a Cannon ultimate uh, into, a, into an Orianna ultimate, into an Alistar engage, and then Misfortune just sh uh, showers her bullet time all the time. So, imagine, uh, just imagine a dragon fight. Uh, Alistar and Miss Fortune walks up to the dragon fight. Alistar WQ uh, knocks up a couple enemies. Miss Fortune kicks off the bullet time. Cannon flashes in with his ultimate. Orianna has already attached the ball to Cannon. Everybody is has been knocked up by Alistar, stunned by the cannon, ulti by the Orianna, and the entire time they're just stuck in the bullet time. So this is the Misfortune meta where it was all about AOE uh, CC so that Miss Fortune could get off her entire bullet time onto the entire enemy team. So Miss Fortune was the meta in support. Uh, Lulu and Alistar was still there, still still the best. Uh, Alistar especially well with Miss Fortune. Lulu was just overpowered at, at this point in time as a support, so she was just really, uh, really good. So that is pretty much it for patch 2.0a, and that is also it for the current episode episode 2 of the meta recap if you guys liked uh, what you saw don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the episode 3 where we'll be covering patch 2.1 2.1 a and 2.1 B so thanks for watching the video guys and bye